So in prior videos, we've been talking about how awesome XLOOKUP is, and it got us thinking, are there times where XLOOKUP doesn't work and index match might be better? We've been talking about how it's obviously better than the VLOOKUP. It's obviously better in a lot of contexts to index match, and we've gone through a whole bunch of examples. But now I'm gonna show you an example where it doesn't quite work. It falls a little short of what index match can do, and index match would need to be used in that case. So. In the prior example, recall, we talked about using a scenario analysis, building a scenario analysis using XLOOKUP, and it worked just fine. We had an income statement historically, and this is, you know, for Wall Street Prep, we, we do a lot of financial training in Excel. This is a common issue, building scenario analyses. You've got revenue all the way down in net income, and you're trying to forecast. So you've got this case, and you're selecting between the best case, the management case, and the weak case, and the way you've done that is you basically have multiple cases down below around best case, management case and weak case. You sort of created different assumptions going forward about what they are. And here you're using XLOOKUP to come up with it. And so, and then the, the model itself sort of grabs that data. And so I'm gonna do this really quickly just so you see what XLOOKUP can do. And then I'll just kind of show you where it falls short. So in this case, I want revenue growth rate to be a function of what the user selection is for case. And I want the lookup array in that case to be the three options that exist. It's either best case, management case, or weak case. And then the return array is in this case, this, and I can I can leverage the magic of Excel lookup, which is sort of, it immediately brings everything across in just one fell swoop without having to worry about copying and pasting or anything like that. Now, when I bring this down, I actually have to, and this is the limitation that I'm gonna talk about, you know, nested X lookups, as we talked about in prior videos, will not work. You actually have to, bring this down and you have to sort of move it. Now it's not a big deal, but imagine if you have many cases, in that case, this starts becoming a pain in the butt. And so this is an area where index match, match, I should say index match, match, really is better. Like there's, there's no, if I wanted to create sort of one master formula that did all of this, where I can sort of copy and paste and it quickly did this, so that when I create my income statement, I'm like, okay, well, revenue plus the revenue growth rate, and I've got my cost of goods sold is 65% of revenue. And then I've got SG&A is 20% of revenue, right? So this enabled me to really quickly create a, um, a scenario analysis. As you're gonna see, this sort of gets the job done. I'm gonna copy and paste this across and then we'll fill this through. And now I've got my analysis. I've really quickly built in a scenario, right? And the scenario works for whatever scenario I've selected. Now the problem is, what if I wanna do this in one fell swoop? And that's where index match match still wins, right? There is no way to do this with XLOOKUP. So how do we do it? All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you the, the way to do it. It's by no means simple. XLOOKUP does not solve this problem for us. And the index match basically says, okay, well, if I wanna get revenue growth, and, and I wanna make, and I wanna get cost of goods sold to growth in just one formula. Well, let's first start with match and make sure that we understand what this thing is trying to do. First, I need to go down one, two, three rows if I want revenue growth, right? If this is a management case. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, let's assume management case is selected. Let's just keep it really simple for now. I'm gonna go down three rows for revenue. And then I wanna go down, I wanna go across three, I should say three columns, one, two, three to get to 2020. Um, one, right? And that gets me where I want. Now, of course, if I, oops, if I copy and paste this down or copy and paste this across, it won't work because in this case, I need to go across four columns. And in this case, I need to go down, not three, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, eight rather. So this all has to increment. If I copy this down, it needs to increment by another, another, um, another five. And then this has to increment by another five here. And so the idea is how do I arrive at a, a formula? I'm gonna get rid of these formats just so that they don't keep bothering me. How do I arrive at the, this match in a way that's, that, that works and is dynamic so it's just one formula? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm actually gonna use the X match instead of match. The X match is basically a better version of match. So if you think about what match is, Match basically says, okay, give me, I'm gonna put this off to the side, give me a lookup value, in this case, management case, and output its relative position within an array. I'm gonna anchor it, and you'll see why in a second. And I need to define that it's an exact match type. 
and that gives me that it's position two within that array. And that way, when I change this to best case or weak case, it changes the way I want. And therefore, the index formula will basically move um, the number of rows and the number of columns that I want, right? So I've dynamically generated that. But then I've got the other issue, which is I need another match down below. I need to constantly increment by the number of, um, I need to increment by five to get down to, to sort of where COGS is in SGNA. I can't use XLOOKUP for that. I have to use match again. And so I've, I basically have to sort of recognize that, you know, if I'm looking for a specific value, like in this case, cost of goods sold, and I want to do that within a lookup array. Well, that's actually going to get the job done for me. Uh, as long as I do this zero exact match, I've got this increment incrementing. And in fact, I, um, I actually need to subtract by one to get the result I want. And then that way, if I move this to, for example, SGNA, I get, you know, five, 10, right? So it keeps incrementing exactly how I, I need it. Well, actually, let me make sure that that's right. So if this gets me two, yep, this gets me two, and this gets me five. So I'm gonna have to increment by one to get to the three, and well, we'll see. Why don't we? Why don't we not not deal with this until we put it all back in, right? So we know that for cost of goods sold, for example, I need eight and three. So maybe all I need to do. So I need eight for this argument. So if I just do this match plus this match, I'll get that plus a one. Should get the job. Um, should get the job done. So before I do that, and I've created sort of this dynamic match function, there's one other thing I want to show you. Let's contrast this match with x match. X match does the exact same thing, but with fewer arguments, which is always a good thing. So the lookup value in this case is is the same management case. The lookup array is the same, and there's no exact match. Two arguments gets the job done. And do the same thing here so x match just slightly better than match no reason to use match anymore you can just use x match less arguments you don't have to specifically define that it's an exact match and here i'm going to have the lookup value defined and i'm going to actually go ahead and define that that the um the column is going to be anchored and i want the column anchored because as i copy and paste this across in a second i don't want um i don't want it to kind of bleed over anchor this and then I can close it up and I get the the six what did I do differently oh I subtracted this by definition by one so I'm gonna do the same thing here and we should be in business right so this approach is better X match this approach is worse and just so you can compare and contrast now the, the final thing to do is realizing that I also dynamically want to shift over from three to four, right? So these arguments I want to shift over. And so what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to use the column function to do that, right? So recognizing that, you know, there's a couple of different ways to do this, but um, you know, column is probably a, the most straightforward way to do this. I'm going to recognize that, you know, if I do the column that I'm in at the moment, minus the column, that um, minus an anchor column where the analysis starts will always give me the the value that I want, right? So I can actually I can actually sort of do this, anchor it, and I'll get my three. And every time I sort of copy and paste that across, it'll keep growing. So this is kind of a, a way not to have to hard code a number, although maybe it's more trouble than simply just typing one, two, three, four above. In any event, I want to show you how to do this without doing any any sort of cheating. And so let's let's try to put this all together now. So we have um, rather, and actually before we do that, let me also make sure that we anchor um, we anchor everything correctly. Lookup value here. I want to anchor. This is this is the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to make sure that this is right. I think we're in business. We'll of course have to double check in a second, but let's try. So I'm going to take these two and replace the current um, the current stuff that's in here with this these two matches. So I'm going to replace this three with this two and um, and five, right? Or I'm going to replace I should say this this eight. So I'm going to do 
Um, and I, I know I'm gonna have to add one to this, so we're gonna do one plus, and let's let's actually put a placeholder in here for a second of one. I'm gonna grab this entire function so I don't screw anything up. I'm gonna take that too. And I'm going to add the five. I might be able to just get away with not adding the one at all. And I'm gonna do a plus here. Let's get rid of this and let's get rid of this. And I think we're actually gonna be just fine. Let's see if that works. Yep, that gets me what I need. Let me copy and paste this down, make sure it does work. I'm in business, so no matter what I've selected, I've got everything. Now the only thing that's left to do is for me to add the dynamically generated three using X match. And now here, I've, um, I'm in this column. This is actually the three that I want in this spot. So I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna put it in here, now that this formula is dynamic. And if I did everything correctly, I've now created one formula that I can copy and paste across, albeit super complicated, but it gets the job done. And that is an example of how XLOOKUP does not do the job that an index X match X match does. So obviously this is a this was a complex one, um, but it was an example where you couldn't get the job done with that new magical formula XLOOKUP.